We are going to see how scopes work with GORM. GORM is a popular object relational mapping library for Go, and using scopes can help you define reusable query fragments for your models. Scopes allow us to encapsulate frequently used query conditions in a clean and maintainable way. Let's go to GORM's page about scopes. This page has various examples of scopes. It is good to explore this page. We will start with this simple application. Here, we define two GoStruct types, user and order. User structure represents a user entity in the application. A user entry has name, email, and orders attributes. Orders is a slice of order structs. This establishes a one-to-many relationship between user and order. It indicates that a user can have multiple orders associated with them. Similarly, order is a struct representing an order made by a user. User ID is an integer field that represents the foreign key relationship to the user who placed this order. Order time stores the time when the order was placed. Payment mode indicates whether the payment was made by card or cash. Price is an integer field representing the price of the order. User is a field of type user. This establishes a relationship between an order and the user who placed it. This is known as a many-to-one relationship, as many orders can belong to one user. Let's say we want to fetch all orders that were paid by card. We can easily do that by using the WHERE clause. However, if we want to reuse this piece of code, it is better to abstract it in scope. Let's create a function card orders. It takes an argument of type GORM database and returns a modified database instance. This function returns a new database instance with a query condition applied. The WHERE clause filters rows that have payment mode as card. Now we will retrieve all orders that have been paid by card. We use the scopes function with the parameter card orders scope function and then append a find. We loop over here on orders and print details. Let's run the program and see if it works. Yes, it shows only card orders. Suppose we want to filter the results with another scope. Let's say we want orders with a value of more than 30. We create another scope price greater than 30 like this. To use this scope, we can simply add another argument to the scopes function. Now it filters the results with both scopes. Let's see if it works. Yay! It prints card orders that have a value of more than 30. There could be scenarios where you would like to reuse a scope with different arguments. Suppose we want to extract all users from a particular domain. How can we do that? So we need a function, users from domain, that accepts an argument domain. This function signature is not like a scope function, so we make the return type as a closure function of the scope signature. In this function, we return the closure function that in turn returns the DB query with a clause on the email ending with the domain. Let's use this scope to get all users with an email from the domain example.com. We can use this scope like this. Now we loop over users and print their emails. Let's look at the output of the program. Users from domain function runs this query with the WHERE clause on email, and the output seems to be OK. All emails are from example.com. Now we will use scope within an association. Let's preload the orders.
If we want to filter the orders using scope, we can add scope as an argument to the preload function. Orders are filtered to return only the card orders of the users. In this loop, we print orders of the first user retrieved. Let's run the program. Yay, orders from the first user are paid by card which matches our filter. Thank you for watching and happy coding.